Hello everyone. So today it's your final computing lesson of your home learning. And even though it's the final lesson of your home learning computing, it's actually the first lesson of a new computing unit. Uh, so it's a really interesting one about blogging. Uh, before you begin today's lesson, make sure that you have um, tried the do now, which is typing a paragraph. See if you can uh, beat my score. Um, that was my second attempt. Um, so make sure you have a couple of girls at that one uh, and make sure you're practicing that skill. So. Um, if you have finished that, then we are ready to move on and find out a little bit more about blogging and then get started with our lesson. So my first question to you is, what is a blog? So take a moment to have a think about that. Can you think of any examples? Have you um, used any? Um, how could you define one? So pause the video here while you think about that. Okay, so blogs. Blogs are regularly updated websites and web pages. They're usually written in an informal style, although some may be written more formally, and they contain blog posts which can be used to document life events, give information about hobbies and interests, or share knowledge on specific subjects. So you might see um, blogs about um, fashion, uh, about uh, makeup, may hobbies, such maybe knitting, uh, calligraphy, for instance. That's where I know I'm when I've set calligraphy for your uh, home learning tasks. Uh, I've definitely found blogs about them. Um, video games, anything really um, can be turned into a blog. And it can be written by one author or more than one author um, who contributes to the blogs as well. Uh, you're quite likely to have come across them. We've definitely used them with our video game unit. Uh, for those of you who have uploaded to a blog for your game, they're the different posts on the blog that has been organised and obviously it holds all the information. So another question for you to think about now is what is the difference between a blog page and a blog post? So just think about that for a moment. Okay, so a blog page is a website where the content from posts is listed. So it will tell you uh, the name of the blog, it will tell you what the general theme of the blog is, say it's a gaming blog, it will introduce that, you know, um, it will have reviews and, and um, news about blogs as well. And blog posts are the actual entries themselves or the articles that are posted on the blog page. So in this unit, you're going to be creating your own blogs and then making your own blog posts up onto that page um, within our theme. So before we actually start to even think about that, uh, we need to have a look at an example blog itself. Okay, so this is my example blog. Um, this is being made using TubeBlog, which will be available to you on Purple Mesh, but we're going to be using it from next week. We're not starting with it today. So just going to go through some different features um, that we can see on the blog page. So we've got the home button here and the search bar, but we don't need to worry about that for now. And then you can see that my blog title is called Visiting Rome. So that means that people who are um, who have come across this blog will know exactly what all the posts are going to be about. And so everything will be related to Rome. So if maybe someone's going on holiday to Rome or has to research about Rome, that then my blog will be helpful for them. You can also see that I've got a description of what the blog is about. So it just says that it's describing the best places to visit in Rome. And that's a bit more detailed for title. Um, so again, it means that um, any new users will know um, if they're interested in this blog or not, if it's relevant to them. Uh, so a bit like a blurb on a book, I suppose. You can see that we have archives here. That just means previous posts. So if you were to blog for a long period of time over maybe months or years, you'd be able to quickly access all the posts by clicking on the archive links. But you can see that I only have one post and that's from March because I only wrote it today. And then in the middle, underneath the title, so you can see I've got an icon as well, the Corinthian um, column um, to go with my Rome blog. Uh, I have one blog post here, uh, which is entitled um, The Colosseum, and you can see that I've created it. I created it at quarter past three. And then what we can do, we can click on the blog post, and then this gives us uh, more information. So take a moment now, what details can you see on this section of the blog post? Pause the video here, what sort of things do you notice about the way it's being formatted and what details it has? Okay, so we can see that we have a title, the Colosseum. Why do you think that's important? 
But it's important, much like with a non-fiction book, that we have chapters and they have names so we know exactly what we're going to be reading about. You, uh, this it will either attract someone's attention who wants to read about the Colosseum, it will signpost to the reader that the information that follows is about the Colosseum as well. We can see here that also the date and time are listed and the author of the blog. So obviously you are going to be writing your own blog, so that will all have your name on when you're ready. Uh, and then we can see that we've got the information is organised as subheadings as well. So the blog is clear and easy to read. So I've got an introduction to the Colosseum, what it's used for, restoration and repair and so on, and then visiting. So again, the reader, the user can find the information effectively and it's clear for them, it's easy for them to understand. If I scroll down, what other features can you see? OK, so we've got a mixture of text here and also images, too. So again, that gives the, uh, the, the user an, an idea of, um, of, of what it looks like. Um, it, it makes it more visually interesting as well. You can see here that I have forgotten to change the font. Uh, of this part of the blog post, um, which doesn't look very professional. Um, so that would obviously need to be fixed and that can be changed later. And then you can also see here this section. What's this for? So this is a comments box um, and that can be used for users to um, say if they enjoyed the post, what they'd like to see next time, uh, if they've been to the Coliseum and, and they've had certain experiences, asking questions based on what they've read. So this is for the users to actually engage with the content that's on the blog. So we'll be making use of those comment boxes uh, when we come to um, create our own blogs as well. So they are the main features of, uh, of a blog and a blog post, a blog page and a blog post. So your first activity today, much like you have been in writing, is creating a toolkit of what a blog um, page and a blog post should include. So you're going to use the software to write. You can type it in the search bar if you want to, or you can access it by going to tools and then to write here. You click on that and you want to launch the app. You don't have this pop-up option, it just opens up, but you're going to be doing non-collaborative. In school, we would be doing collaborative, but we're not going to be in school. And you simply just type in uh, the information. So as I said, we want to have um, a toolkit of uh, features of a blog page. So I'm going to give myself that title here. And you can practice the formatting of this as well. So you can highlight the words and put them in bold. If you want a shortcut for that, it is Control and B and then Control and U. Hopefully it works on here. It's not highlighting, is it? Oh, there we go. Oh, the shortcuts don't work. Um, you just have to double click on the sentence and it will highlight. So blog page features. Well, if I think back to my blog page that I've already seen, I know that it needs a blog title. So that's my first one. And I know that it uh, needs um, a blog description. So, oh, sorry, I can't spell. Let's try that one again. So if you can think of any other blog page features, and I want you to um, type them down here, you might want to maybe think about the blog title. Should it be short and snappy? Uh, should it be catchy in some way? How do you want to engage the reader? And then for the next section, it's going to be um, blog post features. And then you're going to write down the features of a blog post, what will make a really engaging blog post. So for instance, I know that informal language would be quite helpful in a blog post. I know that um, that's not meant to be bold, let me try that one again. Informal language a comment box, for instance. So I'm going to give you two of each. It's your job to uh, think of a full list of features for both. Once you have uh, finished that first activity, then press play on the video and I'll show you the next part. Make sure you do save your work by going to the menu and save, and then we can see um, your toolkits that you've created. So once you've made your toolkit, you're going to be using another piece of software now called To Connect, and that's so you can make a concept map linking ideas together for your blog. 
So you're going to click on blank and then choose, and then you've got this blank um, concept map here. Our blogs are going to be about, um, you're going to choose a city. So in geography, currently you're learning about Paris and London. So making a blog about Paris or London would be great. Uh, much like the example one about Rome, although we're not just going to be talking about the sites, we could talk about the food and other things as well. However, if you have an interest in a different city um, that isn't Paris or uh, London, maybe one that your family, um, that you and your family lived in uh, at one time, or one that you visited a lot, or just one that you're just interested in anyway, and maybe been there on holiday, I'm happy for you to create a blog about that city as well. It just has to be a city that you have knowledge that you can talk about it, um, and you don't need to spend a lot of time researching. So I'm going to make mine about Paris because I can include what uh, we're covering in lessons as well. And basically to add in a box, you just click in the, um, on the blank page and then you just start typing. So Paris, you can make the box smaller or bigger by dragging this corner and then you can just drag it across by using the hand icon. Sometimes this is a little bit fiddly, so just, um, just have some patience with it. And then you can click on this pen. You can change the background of the, um, of the box. Uh, you can change the font. Um, you can also put a picture in as well. So if I go to flags, I can pick the French flag and have that. And then I want to think about the different types of blog posts that I can use. So I'm going to come up with some themes now. So obviously sites is one and I might want to make that a bit bigger. Maybe change the color as well. So maybe make that one red. And obviously food would be a great blog post as well. So click off it and back in to change the color. Let's make that one purple and I'll make that box bigger. Drag it over there maybe about transport because that would be important to visitors as well how do we get around and obviously we've co oh sorry you didn't mean to click on that then sorry about that then the um the icon to close the window is underneath the little bar um, the recording bar so i had to stop recording then um and then just make that bigger to match as well uh, and then maybe something about the actual geography of the city so i think these four at a minimum you want to put onto your concept map um because obviously then we can talk about the river in, uh, in paris and so on but we'll get into those details in a second um, you might have other um, ideas of what you want to include, that's up to you, and then make sure you're happy with the placement of these bubbles here. And then what you can do is, if you click from the corner to that, then it um, draws a line, so then it's looking a bit more like a spider diagram now, oh. and then obviously you can move this around as well and you can see how the lines change. So if you need to make more space later, it is easy to do and do that here as well and you can see that these um there are arrows that have pointed in a certain direction um i don't really mind uh, which direction they're pointing in you can get rid of them by clicking on them and you can change their color as well so you might decide that just to make them all black and get rid of the uh, the arrow direction as well again it's entirely up to you here we go so you're just making it consistent really like that and make that one black as well. Um, so this is what I mean by it's just a little bit fiddly just to click on. There we go and one left so just to make them all match. There we have it. So now I want to think about maybe individual posts that I could make. Um, so thinking about the sites of Paris, I know that we've looked at the Eiffel Tower and then I want to drag that here. I know that we've looked at the Louvre. So I just want to, oh, that's already been dragged, so I can just move that away just so it's a bit clearer. Uh, and then maybe Notre Dame Cathedral could be another one that I want to um, move there. And you can see I've got my lines heading towards it. If I'm thinking about food, I know that I could talk about croissants. just be patient with these lines 
uh, and maybe different cheeses and so on. So you get the idea. Whoops, I didn't mean to uh, connect them. Um, so what you're going to do now is to create a concept map about your city. It can be um, Paris, London, or a different city, as long as you've got um, a, a good knowledge of that place. If you start getting ideas about what you might want to say or include and you want to put more notes in, what you can do, so in the Paris, if I click on this, you can go to notes here. So I might start thinking about my introduction that I want to put on my blog. So um, this blog will give you all the information you need for a vi visit to Paris. You click OK. And then when you hover over it, you can see that the information is there and it disappears when you click off it. The food. Um, again, if you've got any particular ideas of what you want to include, the croissants, um, and then you can put a note in here as well, or maybe some links to an article that you want to look at later. So make sure once you've completed this concept map that you go in and save, and then you've got that uh, as a record, almost like a plan for your, um, for your blog and what you want to include. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. Uh, hopefully you've got lots of ideas for the blog that you're going to create. Remember, don't start the blog today. We're just looking at making the toolkit and then using this to connect software. And then you can do some research if you want to and make some notes on your uh, to connect software. OK, have a great day, everyone. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, ha how we all get on uh, and um, joining uh, with you uh, with the blogging unit next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.